since January of this year, 2023, I've been posting all my content for free online. Twitter, YouTube, I've been posting it all out there for free, providing value to others, and it's been an amazing whirlwind. Um, I'm at uh, 17,000 followers now on Twitter, 3,000 or so or on YouTube. It, it is just surreal. Uh, I've been very fortunate to go on many trips this year, Bitcoin related trips. I, I went to uh, Windsor, Ontario, Toronto, Miami, Boston. You know, I've gone a whole bunch of places talking about Bitcoin. I'm going to Colorado in uh, a couple weeks here. And then next year I'm going on at least half a dozen other trips. I'm going to visit at least half a dozen countries <laughs> um, talking about Bitcoin. Of course, none of those are paid. Um, of course, travel costs are significant. And while conferences and organizations are very generous in helping out with those expenses, you know, at the end of the day, between the conferences and between the sponsors, you know, they still don't cover everything. You know, you know, my time and and my energy and 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 some of my funds, you know, it, it's it's an investment, it, and it's a lot of work. And even before I was talking on Twitter, I was pounding the table on Bitcoin, um, making presentations, in-person presentations, Zoom calls, helping people out, helping people learn. And, and I'm, I don't know, I'm just making this video to say I, I can't do that, in its current form, forever. It's not, it's not sustainable. I'm working on a feature film, raising funds for it. Um, I donated all my time to the script. You know, I've gotten some flack for raising money for it, but you know, it, I, I'm, I'm putting in a free, free value and free effort out there anyway. You know, it's like I have to cover some of my costs, um, and I, I'm very, I'm, I'm very grateful. I, I don't want to make it seem like I'm not, but, but there, there's a, there's a quote um, by Satoshi. Many of you probably know what it is, but Satoshi. In the very early days, I forget when exactly this was, but he said that if you don't get it, referring to Bitcoin, if you don't get it or understand it, I don't have time to try to convince you. Sorry. To a certain degree, I feel that too. Now, it's a little different because Satoshi was working on Bitcoin, improving Bitcoin, and so he's referring specifically to people that were critiquing him um, in, in the project and everything, and he was saying, I don't have time for that because I'm building, busy building the network, building the foundation for the network. And so obviously my situation is a little different because the work I'm putting forth is educational related content. So it's like, yeah, I, I kind of have time <laughs> to educate people, obviously, because that's what I'm doing and that's what I enjoy. So obviously it's a little different. But at the end of the day, the, the heart of it rings true. Most people I talk to about Bitcoin or most people that hear that I'm into Bitcoin uh, don't care. You know, and that's fine. Bitcoin right now is roughly 30,000 US dollars. You're watching this in the future, so therefore it's almost certainly going to be higher <laughs> than 30,000 US dollars. Um, actually, it's not even 30,000, it's like 28,000 US dollars, but point still stands. Most people in the world today do not care about Bitcoin. 99%, 99.5%, maybe even more. Most people do not care about Bitcoin. A lot of people actively think it's a Ponzi, they're actively avoiding it, they think it's a scam. You know, and most people don't want to learn. You know, I, I've been asked, well, why is it the most, why is it Bitcoin adoption? It's, it's because people don't want to learn. You know, if, if we have the metaphor of the Titanic and lifeboats, a sinking ship and a lifeboat, it's very easy for us psychologically to stand on the ship, say, the ship's never going to sink, it's so big that not even God can sink the ship, and look at the lifeboat and say, well, that little flimsy wood boat in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean? Yeah, no, that's not for me, thanks. Enjoy your, you know, volatility on the rough ocean seas, but the Bitcoin enthusiasts, the obsessed Bitcoin people like me, we're out there trying to educate people for free that you should probably get on that lifeboat. You know, like th this ship is big, yes, and the ship does, will take time to sink, yes, but it's, sim it's simply supply and demand. If that lifeboat turns out being the better bet, the statistical probability that you will be able to get a seat on that lifeboat uh, goes down exponentially. And that, in short, is the reason why these Bitcoin crazies are out there pounding the table on it. You know, Bitcoin is a lifeboat that's open to everyone, but the problem is that the captain of the ship is going to go down with the ship, and the more they prevent you from getting off to the lifeboat, the longer they can preserve the ship. People say, oh, well, the government will ban Bitcoin. It's like, yeah, they will. They will. You won't be able to sell your bonds or your cash or your whatevers for Bitcoin. That's not against Bitcoin. That's against your bonds. That's against your cash. Okay? Don't think of the government as this institute that's going to lock out Bitcoin. No, the government is going to be a prison. Okay? And that's not some crazy libertarian 
pie in the sky theory. That's not some political statement of, oh, look at how bad the politics are. No, it's simple incentives. It's a simple incentive structure. If you're playing a game of chess and now you are no winning position where you cannot win, the only logical move is to stop the game from progressing. And that's what government's going to do because they have to. They can't let people continue to use Bitcoin. They can't allow Bitcoin to be there. They have to imprison the people on the ship because if you allow the people on the ship to be free, they will voluntarily choose the lifeboat. And so we're in this weird period where Bitcoin is available to be exchanged for other currencies. And I, I know this might be going over people's heads at this point, but what, what am I trying to say here? I'm trying to say that most people won't make it out. Sorry. I mean, I, again, think of a bank run. You know, what happens in a bank run? There was a rumor that the bank is insolvent. And so what do people do? They go to the bank, they withdraw their cash, the bank becomes a little more insolvent. As the rumor continues to spread, more people go to the bank, they go on their lines, they withdraw their cash, and the fractional reserve system, the bank, continues to become more and more insolvent as time goes on. And eventually, it gets to the point where the bank closes their doors. It's the same game theory, in the same way that the captain of the ship prevents people from leaving the ship, in the same way that the government prevents people from selling their bonds to, to get out, in the same way the United States government, in the early 1970s and the 1930s and other periods of history even farther back, when people are having a run, you just stop convertibility, mark it up, do whatever you need to do to make it seem like solvency remains, and then continue on. It's what we did with gold. The United States government made gold illegal. What, what do you do? You preserve the currency at the expense of those that hold gold. Again, back to the bank run. What happens? You, you punish the people putting money in your bank account in order to save the bank. That's what you do. And so, mathematically, in a bank run, the majority of people can't make it out whole. Why? Because the money's not there. And it's the same thing here. The majority of people did not make it off the Titanic. Why? Because there were not enough seats at the lifeboat. And the majority of people will not adopt Bitcoin until fiat and political power, political energy, political influence, all of which is backed by the force of a gun, will confiscate the vast majority of wealth from people. That's not me being a fear monger. That's not some, you know, fear porn from a bad article headline of the day. No, it's basic incentive structures. That's what's going to happen. Maybe in five years, maybe in two years from recording this video. Maybe 2025, maybe 2028, maybe 2035, I don't know. But I know, I know that we're probably talking, we're not talking multiple decades, let's put it that way. But at the end of the day, what's going to happen is most people are going to realize that these three stages, the first stage is that the lifeboat is there and it's open to everyone and anyone could just get a seat. The second stage is when people begin to realize that seats on the lifeboat are drying up and now you have to sell everything you have to get that lifeboat. Lifeboats have gone from being extremely cheap to now you have to sell everything you possibly can to get any tiny insignificant seat on that lifeboat. And then the third group of people will lose everything and they'll go down with the ship. You know, I mean, in Bitcoin's case, it'll spend a long time just floating around, not doing anything. And then there will be a time where Bitcoin starts going up and it starts going up rapidly. And the only logical thing at that point will be to, you know, take what others would call uh, excessive risk and go all in because it's your only chance remaining. Because the next phase after that, everything, everything's taken. And that's the unfortunate truth. In a bank run, 90%, 95% of the people get wiped out. FTX, you know, people ask me all the time, you know, people, the, the very people that hate on Bitcoin and, and laugh at me, literally mock me online and in real life, laugh at me to my face um, about FTX. It's like, I never had, I, I never lost money in FTX. Like that, that doesn't have anything to do with me. You know, it, it's <laughs> because FTX was a fractional reserve system. What happened was that the fractional reserve came due and the majority of FTX uh, creditors lost everything or at least the majority of their wealth. The same thing here. And so why am I giving up? I'm giving up to a certain degree because you, you have to accept, if you understand Bitcoin, you have to accept most people aren't going to understand that before that happens. There are two ways people learn about Bitcoin. It's either through curiosity or through pain. And people learn about anything from those two ways, curiosity or pain. People don't quit smoking until they're so curious they realize, oh, this is bad for me, I should stop. Or the pain of learning that if they don't quit in the next six months, they're gonna get cancer of some sort. You know, those are the only two ways people learn. You know, 
or same with alcoholics, same with drug addictions of any kind, same with people budgeting or trying to get on a diet. All the, the way people change behaviors and the way people learn about new things is either through curiosity or pain. And right now, we're in the very rare period where the only people that are pounding the table on Bitcoin again and again and again for years on end, going across the world, across the nation, you know, on their own dime, on their own voluntary effort, making films about it, making podcasts and articles and threats. The, the obsessed people like me, the tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands like us, we are the extremely curious, the extremely critically thinking, and the extremely long-term, deep thinking kind of people that we happen to be the very end of the bell curve, where we're on the extreme end of disagreeableness, we're on the extreme end of curiosity, and we just happen to be the people that are fascinated enough by this and understand the long-term vision, understand the mathematical inevitability that we are pounding the table, and most people won't listen because they're not curious enough to look at the lifeboat and see, oh, that might have some utility. They're not curious enough to look at the whole of the Titanic and realize, oh, yeah, we have hit a critical mass, and it's mathematical certainly that the ship will sink. And so, once you accept that, as someone that's into Bitcoin, you realize most people won't make it out until the ship sinks and takes them down. That's not me bragging. That's not me saying, look, I told you so. That's just the truth. Bitcoin will start going up. It won't stop going up, and people will look from the Titanic out the lifeboat, and they'll say, that has to be a Ponzi, it keeps going up and up and up forever. But the people from the lifeboats will say, as they've been saying all along for years, as I am right now, they'll look back at the Titanic and they'll say, look, it looks like a Ponzi. It's going down and down and down. Bitcoin is not going up, the dollar is going down. Bitcoin is not going up. The stocks and the real estate and the gold and the silver and the oil and the euros and the pesos and, and every other fiat currency, they're all going down and they're probably just going to keep going down at a faster and faster rate exponentially as this political currency unit system, fiat currency, dollar, whatever you want to call it, cannibalizes itself from within. And as there's less productivity, the government will have to confiscate more productivity of what remains in order to finance the exponentially growing debt. It's, it's so obvious. And anyway, I, 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 have, I have to give up to a certain degree. I'll, I'll still do free content, of course. I'll still, you know, like I said earlier, I'll, I'll still travel, you know, I'm doing all these things, but at the end of the day, I have to accept that I can't be wasting my time. I can't be wasting my time on trying to educate people that have no interest to seriously learn, you know, because for every person out there that I talk to that is genuinely curious about Bitcoin and trying to get off zero and trying to learn, you know, as quickly as I can, even if it takes them weeks or months or maybe even a year or more, you know, that person is very different. And, and, and for every single one of those people, there's at least five or 10 or 20, maybe even 100 people out there that ask me questions about Bitcoin and they're not serious. They don't really want to learn. And with no disrespect to them, is that if they're asking me questions about Bitcoin and they're not actually trying to learn and they're actually not going to see their commitment to learning about Bitcoin through and through, they won't make it. Like it's statistically improbable that they'll cross the chasm and make it to the other side before political currency confiscates all the way. Like it, it's just improbable. It, it's it's game theory. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just saying that I can't be wasting my time as much as I love the people that ask me questions. Oh, <laughs> one of my chickens. Yeah, that's because they're chicken. That's why people don't want to learn about Bitcoin. <laughs> no, that's 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 me. But but it's not wrong. Um, I'm just saying I, I can't be spending my time on educating people that are not going to take that education seriously. And I have to be only putting my time in the places where education can be taken seriously. You know, because for every person, for, for every hour that I spend trying to educate someone that's just going to cash out of Bitcoin when it go, when it doubles, or for every hour I try to spend on someone that is viewing Bitcoin or this ticket on a lifeboat as just a way to get more political currency, you know, for every hour I'm spending there, that's an hour I'm not spending helping onboard a charity or an organization or a mission group or a church in the developing world on the Bitcoin. Like it, my time is that zero sum game. Like every hour I'm spending with you, knowing that the, st the statistical probability you're actually going to heed my warnings is low, I, I can't do that. And so I've been thinking about what I need to do and what needs to change. You know, I'm still going to make free content. I'm still going to post so many YouTube videos, <laughs> a lot of YouTube videos, a lot of articles, a lot of tweets, a lot of Twitter threads, other things. But, you know, I'm, I'm going to have to monetize my assistance for other people, my, my consulting or, or my, my help for other people. You know, I, I, there are people I'm more than willing to help for free. But when it comes to figuring out who are the serious people that actually want to 
invest a little bit of their effort in order to put in the time to learn versus the people that aren't serious, that I, I think the best way is finding a way to charge some sort of fee for that effort. I'm putting the effort to educate someone. I feel like that person should be putting in a little bit of effort so that I have the mental peace of mind knowing that, okay, they're actually serious, they actually want to learn, they actually want to ask questions that are honest and questions that they're going to think about in the future. And so, to me, that's what makes perfect sense. Um, so yeah, I don't really know what I'm going to do. I don't really know how much I'm going to charge. But I, I do know, I do know over time I'll charge more and more. Because, you know, as Bitcoin goes up, as it continues to skyrocket into the future, and as the tickets to the lifeboats uh, continue to get more expensive, my my time will become more valuable. Because the, the Titanic will begin sinking faster than the rate of people that are educated on lifeboats trying to educate people. And, and likewise, you know, my, my time as someone that understands Bitcoin and can help people securely and safely understand all the pros and all the cons, all the trade-offs and all the risks with a wide variety of topics when it comes to Bitcoin. You know, when, when I have that subset of knowledge, right now it's very common within the Bitcoin space, but when, when the point comes where adoption is just exploding and, and price in terms of US dollars is exploding, I mean, my time is going to become only more valuable. So I don't know what I'm going to charge. I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I do know that um, the value of my time will continue going up because the value of my time is finite. And so as the value of Bitcoin, which is finite, continues to skyrocket, the value for my time will continue to skyrocket. And so, yeah, I don't know. Either I am insane and I've lost my mind or I'm brilliant. That's not me saying that out of arrogance. It's just true. Either I am years ahead of my time and I can just see what is so obvious to me so clearly and I'm correct or, or I'm not. You know, either I am insane or the rest of the world is insane because all the experts, all, all the professionals, you know, everyone else says that I'm insane or that my worldview is insane and I am saying that I think it's right. And so either they're all wrong or I'm wrong. And maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But you're watching this in the future, so you'd be able to tell. Am I wrong or am I right? I don't know. What seems to be the directionally correct answer? I think I'm going to be right. And unfortunately, if I'm right, you know, you can't have most people make it out of a bank run hole. So anyway, I just wanted to make that known that, yeah, I'm going to be charging for my services. Um, but fundamentally I'm not here for that I'm not here for those fees I'm not here for the money I'm here to educate people I'm here to help people because I genuinely believe it's going to be massively life-changing for people not in the terms of oh get rich quick no in, in the terms of preserving your purchasing power in the face of endlessly expanding political currency unit debasement and decline you know so I'm, I'm here for the mission I've been here for eight months this year in 2023 pounding the table and the people that are going to charge the, the people that I'm going to charge for my services in two years three years five years are the people today I was pushing this onto them you know for free trying trying to help them and and they just didn't and so you know there, there is no free lunch you know you had the opportunity to learn for free but you know now I have to charge and that rate is just gonna keep going up as the urgency and the significance and the probability of me being wrong or the probability of me being right um, goes up so so yeah I, I'm giving up on helping people one-on-one -on -one for free <laughs> basically you know I mean my friends my family my co-workers other people on Twitter randoms I, I meet in real life you know I, I just can't do it my mental capacity I can't justify my time doing that for free perpetually forever and so I'm, I'm giving up on that I have to give up because those people gave up on themselves to a certain degree so so I'm here I'm here to continue making stuff my movie, if you want to support my movie, uh, link is in the description. We're about a third of the way raising the budget. I think it's going to be a really good project, and that movie will be posted for free, which is why we're raising money for it, because, you know, we're not going to make money on it. You know, I, I'm volunteering my time in the script. I'm making the project. You know, if you want to support that, it would mean the world to me. Hopefully every dollar donated for that project results in one new um, Bitcoin or one new um, seat on that lifeboat being filled before the Titanic gets down too far. Um, but, you know, besides that, you know, if you want to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, I'll have some sort of consulting thing in the description. I don't know how I'm going to do it yet, what I'm going to charge it with service. But, you, but, you know, I'll do that. The, the link will be in the description. So please follow me on Twitter, YouTube, you know, all the social medias. I'll be posting plenty of free content. And then if you enjoy that content and you want more, 
please consider supporting my big, bigger projects like the documentary or like other projects and please consider um, you know, getting a consulting if you think that would be useful and that would bring value to you.